to say this is going to be an interesting video. All right, so today it is my first normal video after 15 Days of Foundation has ended. The wrap-up video where I rank all the foundations is still coming on April 9th, but I figured I would do my normal three videos a week leading up to April 9th so you guys still have videos to watch. So today we're trying out a brand new product from Becca. Ever since this launched, I picked it up on Sephora. I've been so curious about this. I think I got it during the middle of 15 Days of Foundation and it has been so hard to resist putting this bad boy on my face. This is the Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I'm gonna make this intro super brief. We're just gonna go over the basic points of this product and then get into putting it on and I am doing a full day wear test in this video and flash test. So this powder retails for $38 and you get 0.35 ounces of product. So that's a freaking pricey powder. To give you some comparison, the Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Powder also has 0.35 ounces of product. But the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, these two are some of my favorite loose powders, by the way. This one has 0.7 ounces of product. So it actually has double the amount of powder that both of these ones have, and this is a drugstore. So the interesting thing about this powder, if you haven't seen or heard anything about it, is that it's supposed to have a mist-like sensation on the skin. So it's supposed to feel almost like wet, basically. It has 50% water and glycerin in it. It's supposed to give you a seamless finish and a comfortable feel. Sets and refreshes makeup for a silky, smooth, invisible finish. Smooth and blur fine lines and imperfections. If you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Beirudo family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Just a reminder, we're still shooting to raise $20,000 for Project Beauty Share. The shop is open until the 9th. The wrap-up video goes up. The link will be down below. All right, so we are going to be doing a wear test today so we can see how the powder wears throughout the day. So it's 11.30 right now and I've already put on my foundation and my under eye concealer. So I am trying the foundations from 15 Days of Foundation for the wrap-up video right now, which you guys will be seeing on April 9th. But I have tried this combo before with the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder, so I know how it wore with that one. So I'm using the CYO Life Proof in 101 mixed with the Flower Beauty Light Illusion in the lighter shade L1. And then my concealer, which is already greasing because I've been talking and haven't set this yet. But I, what I've been doing is putting just a dab of Tarte Shape Tape right at the beginning of my under eye, what I'm trying to say, right towards the inner corner. And then I'll go with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion in the shade 1N and I'll use this for concealing the rest of my under eye. This has about medium coverage, it's not full coverage, but the finish of it and the way that it sets with powders that I have been using, I've been using a mix of my Physicians Formula Powder in the darker shade mixed with the Wish App powder that I used in that video and this combo with those powders have been just working really well for me and my under eyes have been like kind of funky lately. I'm so excited about this thing. On the back it says set and chill. It looks like there is not a lot of powder in here at all. I don't know why they would make the packaging like that because it just looks like it's half empty. It looks like it has a little kind of pink salmon tint to it. I recently made a whole video on my favorite powders to set foundation with, so I'll link that in the eye and down below. But in that video, I talked a little bit about how my skin is super weird with powders. Typically, loose powders in my skin do not mix well, whether it's for setting under eye concealer or for setting my whole face. I do have a couple that I like that are in that video, but for the most part, it usually just kind of removes any of the coverage. It just makes my skin look not great at all. So I'm kind of hesitant about this one, but we'll see how it is. I was kind of going back and forth whether or not I wanted to set my under eyes with this powder or use my normal powders, but since we are testing this product, We'll see how it does on the under eyes. Keep in mind, 99% of loose powders on my skin don't work, especially on my under eyes. So if this was like the average person's skin, giving this powder a fair shot, someone who can use like, you know, the Cody Airspun, loose powders, whatever, can bake, I'm like way down here. I cannot bake. Baking looks horrible on my under eyes. So just keep in mind, I'm like coming at it down here with just how my skin reacts to loose powders. I still wanna try this, and I feel like there are a lot of you out there who also have the same issues. So maybe if that's you, this will help you out or not, we'll see. So I'm gonna smooth out this crease that's already starting before I go in and attempt to set my under eyes. My concealer and stuff has been on for just a couple minutes so far, just since I've been talking. I'm not gonna use a sponge, I'm not gonna bake because if I'm giving my under eyes any kind of fair shot with a loose powder, the best way that I find to apply it for myself under my eyes is with a dense brush like this. This is a Smashbox full coverage foundation brush. It's actually a foundation brush, but this is usually what I use for my under eyes. I also have an e.l.f. one I use, which I'll link down below. And then more recently, like in the past couple weeks, I've been using the BH Cosmetics 137. And I like this one because it's a little bit smaller, so it's really great for setting the under eyes, but it's still very firm. So I still get that coverage and I don't feel like it removes as much of the concealer. If I go in with any kind of more loose brush or like a fluffy brush for the under the eyes, 
does not work with my skin. To give it a fair shot, I think I'm gonna use the BH Cosmetics 137 because this is what I've been using almost every day the past couple weeks. This whole thing flips up and then you remove this part. Oh, it's like a little mesh thing. This looks like the Tarte foundation powder that I have a whole review on, I believe. Yeah, like an old one. Just zoomed in a tiny bit more so hopefully you guys can see up close and personal. I need to pluck my eyebrows. I just wrapped up with 15 days of foundation, got back in from San Francisco last night, so I'm a little bit all over the place right now. Don't mind the brows. So I'm just gonna go ahead, dip my brush into this little mesh thingy, kind of tap it off a little bit. So I have the powder on the brush. I'm so curious. Okay, here we go. Oh, whoa. Okay. Wow, I have lots of... <laughs> Lots of thoughts right now. My under eyes feel wet and it just darkened my under eyes. Oh my God. At least like three shades. I hope that's showing up on camera. I hope that doesn't happen to the rest of my face because that literally just, wow, completely darkened my under eyes. I don't think I've ever had a powder darken it that much. And then what's happening here? It's almost turning lighter right here in a part. It feels like it's kind of, I guess it does feel a little bit tight. Yeah, looking pretty horrible underneath my eyes. Uh, okay, so I definitely would not use this underneath my eyes. Friggin' dark under there. I think just so I can get like the same look on both eyes, I am gonna do it on the other side. And then I'm gonna go in with a lighter powder over top to brighten everything, probably after I do the rest of my face. It is so bizarre. It feels like you're putting water or like lotion on under there or something. It feels very wet. Wow, it's like darkening by the second. Okay, yeah, you can definitely feel it tightening. <laughs> it almost feels like when I did the video on the weird hot look products, that under eye lifting pen thing, it almost feels like that where I, I can like definitely feel it tight a bit under my eyes. This one looks a lot better than this side though. This one's still darkened though, so I definitely would not use this as an under eye powder like ever again. I'm just gonna hope that when I put this on the rest of my face, it doesn't darken to that color, but I'm gonna do the powder for my full face and then I'm gonna go in, like I said, I'm gonna use like a brightening powder under there because off the bat, there's no point in like isolating a wear test for underneath my eyes because I would not put this under my eyes. Uh, wow. So I guess to get this in the mesh thing, you have to close it again and then flip it over and then open it, which I actually like better than, yeah, that's way nicer than having to like tap it into the lid or something like you normally do with loose powders. So whether I use loose setting powder, press powder, I always use a firm powder brush like this. Again, I talked about why in that video, so I'm not gonna go into it here, but this just always applies powder the best on my skin. I don't blend, I can't use like a big fluffy brush most often, and the best application for me is just pressing the powder into my skin, making sure it's all blended and not going like this so the foundation doesn't like rub off underneath. So that's just what works best for my skin. This is the For Less CB4 brush. I'll have everything linked down below. Here we go, folks. Round two. Oh my gosh. It feels even weirder on your face. It feels so friggin' wet. This feels wrong. This feels like a makeup no-no right now. Very natural matte. Doesn't look like I have a super matte like powder caked on. It does seem to be one of those powders that takes away the coverage of my foundation though. You can see a lot more coming through on this side than on this side. It did seem to kind of take away some of that foundation underneath. Again, that's pretty classic for me. As far as the shade, looking at this area, not up here, cause that's where it already darkened, I do think the powder did darken my face too. Not as bad as underneath my eyes, but I would say it darkened about at least a shade, yeah. The finish on my dry skin though doesn't look too bad for being like a matte powder, but I feel like because of the whole Hydra Mist water thing they have going on, I would kind of expect it to be a little bit dewier. Going on this side, it feels so weird, dude. I literally feel like I'm stamping like setting spray onto my face. It's kind of exciting. Like when do you feel a new sensation on your face with makeup? You know, like I feel like everything has kind of been done in that department, but then here we go. With Becca, this is wild. I can feel kind of like the tightening happening. My face feels pretty dry right now. My under eyes for sure, like especially this one feels hella dry. Definitely darkened. Now my face is much darker than my chest. Blowing this down a little bit. Seems to be emphasizing my texture more on this side. It's clinging a little bit to some like dryness and it doesn't look quite as smooth as this side. Almost looks a little bit patchy. Ooh, I'm scared for my forehead for this one. 
So far, the only thing I'm liking about this is the like initial sensation of actually putting it on your face. Here we go. Oh my God, it feels so weird. Yeah, it pretty much like instantly darkens. I mean, ooh, looking rough. What's going on right there? Right between my eyebrows, it is not looking good. It's doing some weird cleaning there. I have a few like whiteheads or something right here. I think from, I think it was from the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. I can't tell if it's that or the Becca Aqua Luminous. I'm really hoping it's not the Becca Aqua Luminous because if you saw day 15, you know how I feel about that one. But I am getting like a little bit of whiteheads or something from that. But on this area where I have those and I have more texture right on the center of my forehead, it does not look good at all. This is a little bit worse than I was anticipating. Not only did it remove my coverage, like I said, classic problem with me with powders, but it also darkened and it is cleaning certain areas and I have no idea what's happening underneath my eyes and on my forehead, it also looks like shitsies. So what I'm gonna do is brighten up my under eyes a little bit because we already know it's a no-go for sure underneath my eyes. I mean, I would not use this again myself on the rest of my face, but for the sake of the video, we'll do a wear test to see how it goes. So what I'm doing is I just mix a little bit of the Maechir white powder. This has like a very light white brightening kind of effect and I mix in some of the Physician's Formula powder. But because my face is so dark right now, I don't wanna mix this too light. So I'm probably just gonna basically use the Physician's Formula one, which also sits really nicely underneath my eyes. So let's just set this, brighten it up. There, you can already see how much more lifted this side looks than this side, I look like dead. Obviously my under eyes are gonna look pretty shitty today because I'm just brightening it at this point. It's not gonna make them look any better because of that powder underneath it. Wow. All right, I'm gonna get real up close. So here you can see all of the weirdness happening right here, clinging on to everything. Also looks a little bit patchy and odd. You see it clinging down here it just does not look the best. But here's a little close-up. Oh shit, HQ is on. Is anyone else straight up addicted to the HQ app but doesn't make it past like the third question every time? So right now it's 11.56. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I will be back. It is now 12.40 but the check-in time is 12 o'clock. Now that the rest of my makeup is on, I don't feel like it looks as noticeably horrible. But I wouldn't say I would look at my skin right now and think it looks good. Exactly the same as my thoughts previously. For being 50% water, I feel like my skin feels hella dry right now. You definitely feel that, obviously, when it first goes on because you get that really cool sensation that does feel like you're putting water on your face, but now that it's like set on my face, it feels super set. Like I definitely can't feel any kind of stickiness or tackiness. My face is fully set and matte, but my skin just feeling it as I'm talking feels very dry. So we'll see how this wears throughout the day, but if you have dry skin, this one I think is a no. At this point, whether your skin type is oily, dry, whatever, if you have any kind of weird powder problems like I do, if you have more textured skin or if you have any kind of dry patches, stuff to cover up, whatever, if you have the same kind of loose powder problems that I do, this is a major no-go for me. I would not wear this again. The only thing I like about this product, I keep feeling friggin' lashes stick together or something. The only thing I like about this at this point is just that cooling sensation when you first get. If they use that same sensation and turned it into like a liquid foundation or press powder or something, I think I'd probably, hopefully like that a lot more, but this as loose powder for me is a major thumbs down at this point. Keep in mind, this is my skin. I'm sure if you're someone who can wear loose powders and doesn't have the same powder issues that I do, this will probably look totally different on your skin. I tried to kind of bring the powder down on my neck, so I don't think the shade difference is as noticeable. I don't think I've seen that drastic of darkening that quickly with a powder before. Cool idea, not loving the actual product at all but check-in time is 12 o'clock. Just because this is a loose powder, let's see how this does in flash. So here's a little flash test. There's not a whole lot of natural light coming through right now. We're having like a totally gray day in Seattle right now, but here's a little shot what it looks like in natural light. The shade is not even showing up. Let me try and like back up here. It looks different in real life, but let me show you zoomed in. So hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. It almost looks like splotchy and just like clinging weird. And then here's the rest of my face again. The rest of my face doesn't look horrible. I just would not reach for this again. But let's go ahead and do a flash test. 
whoa major flashback uh considering it's actually a few shades darker than my neck in real life this looks a few shades lighter than my neck so this has like major major bounce back i would not recommend wearing this one in flash photography so for the rest of my face for this blue shade i use the sedona lace what is this actually called? I don't know what this is called. There's no name on it. I use this bright blue shade right there on my lid. And then I use the Milani Most Love Mattes palette for all of my matte shadows, which I am obsessed with. These blend out so easy. For bronzer, I use the Tarte Don't Be Afraid to Dazzle shade right here. Oh, it smells so good. Highlight is the MAC Hyper Real Glow. I just go in with this lightest shade right here, which has gotten its use out of it so far. That same shade I used as a face highlight is also what's on the inner corner of my eyes. The lashes I used the Eyelore 121s. Literally threw these products everywhere. Where did that go? For lips, I used Urban Decay First Sin, and it was a little bit too like bright orangey for what I was going for, so then I toned it down with the Maybelline Tease Vivid Lacquer, which literally disappeared. And then for blush, I used the Maybelline Fit Me blush in the shade 35. So it's now 4.36, so it's been on for four and a half hours. I have been doing taxes since I last saw you guys, four and a half hours. That time of the year, if you're a freelancer, you know this is the most fun time of the year ever. So I feel like my face is looking even more orange now. It's looking very splotchy, like especially on my forehead, which I know is happening earlier, but I feel like even more so. It's like a little bit more noticeable now. I'm getting a little bit of creasing around my mouth area, but I wouldn't say it's worse than usual but it is there so i'll see you guys in a few more hours at the end of the night okay right now it's 9 12 so it's been on for a little over nine hours i shit you not i just wrapped up taxes so this is one of those that i just don't think is going to be for everyone again if you have any kind of similar situation to my skin type then you might have a similar experience to what i did but if you have no problem with that then just keep in mind the darkening thing it's not one that i would reach for Ever again but I'm glad I tried it glad I now know it almost looks like chalky up close a little bit I'm gonna zoom in Ooh, yeah emphasizing kind of my lines up here and stuff ignore this lip dryness I actually only have when you guys are seeing this I think I'll be about 12 days left on Accutane which is wild you can definitely see the color better in here <laughs> this is what it's looked like all day it is a really cool sensation the whole like cooling thing so i don't know if you can get a sample of this from sephora if they can just like tap some out in a little sample jar for you but if you can get a sample i would because it's just such a like unique experience it's an experience it's not just a product it's like it's an experience i hope you guys enjoyed this video regardless if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're new here don't forget to subscribe if you're already subscribed click the bell down below because YouTube doesn't send videos to subscription boxes anymore, and if they do, it's like two days late. So the bell just notifies you when I upload, so you can click that if you want to know when I upload. If not, that's cool too. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.